would you like to see what it's like to do a European driving holiday in a car like this? <laughs> Unfortunately, we're going to be going in this, the company Tesla. Now, you might wonder, given the choice of cars that we have around us, why we'd choose this. But you know we're from Yorkshire, right? And we've got free charging until the end of September. And you know what? Taking a supercar down to a tiny French village isn't always as fun as you think it is. We're splitting the journey into three parts. The first leg, 300 miles down to the tunnel, we're doing straight after school on a Friday night. Now what could go wrong? So far it's going great. Three hours in, we've almost done 100 miles. So at this point, we'll have different needs. Some of us need a coffee, some of us need the loo, and some of us need a McDonald's. The car didn't need charging, but of course, we plugged it in and charged while we were there. Now, we don't have to charge the car again until we get to the tunnel. We might even make it a little bit into France, but I'm going to charge here for 10 minutes at Maidstone and give us a little bit of leeway just in case. Now, lots of EV owners will tell you you need to plan your accommodation around the car, but I think that's complete BS. We plan our holidays around us, and if the car works, that's great, and if it doesn't, then it'd have to go, wouldn't it? And so on the UK leg, it's worked fine. It's only cost us 10 minutes of extra time. I can kind of live with that, but it's going to go on the clock. And had we known that all the charges at the tunnel were definitely going to be free, well, then we wouldn't have made that stop either. So there definitely needs to be more charges here just to give people that peace of mind. We've now got 30 minutes before we board and that will get the car charged to 100%. The only thing we need to do now is to try and avoid buying the giant Toblerone. Mission successful. And we pick up a coffee addressed to somebody called Fred, whoever that is. Back in the terminal, they announce all the trains are delayed. That means that we have to go and unplug the car and move it because it's now charged up to 100%. Bit of a pain, but hey ho. Here's a more immediate problem though. We succumb to the giant Toblerone. Two hours later, we're finally ready to board and we're directed to the single deck on the train because apparently our car is too wide for the upper deck. Something that later on, We'll find out for a fact. Now, I'm sure you know that our car has got Disney and Netflix and games, but this farting thing never Burn fails to me. please. No. Here's a win that I didn't think about. We can leave the aircon on. There's no engine to switch off, you see. 30 minutes later, we arrive in France, and if you've not used the tunnel before, what you do is you just drive straight up this ramp and straight onto the motorway, and that's it. So all French motorways have tolls, so we say get yourself a toll tag like we did, and it saves all the hassle. Two and a half hours later, and 250 miles into France, this is our first charging stop. And the car says it needs just 15 minutes, which sounds nuts. But as you'll see later, that works out completely fine. Now, what can you do in 15 minutes? Buy a handbag, apparently. Charging's costing a fortune. That 15 minute charge gets us another three hours or 200 miles into France and now it's tea time or dinner time depending what you say where you were brought up. Now of course this charge isn't costing us any time because we're just eating the Chinese while the car's charging which is something we'll be doing anyway. And that's the end of the first day's driving in France. We're now going to be staying in Le Mans for less than 24 hours and tomorrow morning we're heading down to the Dordogne. This final leg's got a 20 minute charge around lunchtime, which fits in nicely, and then a five minute stopover just before we get to the holiday destination. As you can see, the weather's a bit miserable. By the time we get to the last charge, it's 40 degrees. This is the only extra time the car's added on the way down through France. We sit here for 20 minutes and get a good amount of charge in it because when we get to the site, there's nowhere to charge. Now, finally, it's time to hit the pool. It's 40 degrees centigrade and we're just happy to be here. This is the first night in the holiday accommodation and as you can tell, the weather is now broken. Despite the long journey, we're already hitting the tourist trail. Now, this is going to be a real test of whether or not the Tesla works for us. We've made no plans for charging. We're just going to visit wherever we feel like we want to go. And if there happens to be a charger there, then we're going to plug it in and charge. And as it happens, there's plenty of these little Movive chargers in every single French village that we visit. However, there's a bit of a problem. Not a single bastard one works. Even though we complain to the charging company and try at least seven, Third we can't one. get one single charger to work. 
and so after fair. four days and a couple of hundred miles of touring around we have to accept that we're going to have to make a beeline for this supermarket that has a fast charger and this one works perfectly we fit it in with a food shop so we don't feel like we're wasting any time now if all these little chargers worked we'd be fine we'd be sitting and eating our lunch the car would be trickle charging we'd come back to a charged car and on with your day never thinking about the car at all but at the moment it's not quite there and so there's a few little bumps to overcome Ow! so would we take the tesla again down to the dordoin i think so we certainly made it work without too much trouble despite the lack of charging where we were staying if all those little destination chargers worked then it had been perfect maybe they'll fix them that was my main concern about taking it i just didn't want the holiday to be all about charging the bloody car and on the way back on the tunnel the only thing that really went wrong was that we loaded the car on the top deck you remember what we said earlier so yes a tesla model y really doesn't fit on that upper deck so we damaged two wheels on the car fortunately the tunnel admitted liability and now they're going to pay for that so you might be thinking what's our motivation for posting a video about teslas well it just so happens that we buy prestige cars for a living and that we run a tesla as a company car now on the way back from france we collected this lovely ferrari portofino and as we drove past Sheffield, we picked up this beautiful Porsche Boxster GTS. Which just goes to prove that we can be petrol heads and run an EV. It doesn't have to be exclusively one thing or the other. We've now done some 60,000 miles in Teslas over the last three years. So if you're thinking of buying one, head over to our website. And there's a guide on there to how to get the best deal out of Tesla. You think they won't do a deal with you, but we beg to differ.